So in the first section, I talked about the most obvious one, which is the battle of the lead foot. It's the first thing that everybody thinks of when they're fighting a southpaw or somebody of the opposite stance. Same thing for southpaws fighting orthodox. But I also touched on briefly something called the battle of the lead hand. This is something that happens an awful lot. You'll notice that when a lot of orthodox versus southpaw fights happen, it becomes a real cagey affair and you see a lot of playing with the lead hand. Now I'll bring Danvers in again and I'll explain why this happens. So because our lead hands are close to each other, if Danvers doesn't react to what I'm doing with my lead hand, I can just place it there and I can throw that shot. So what we end up doing is playing this battle where I'm gonna try and either pull his hand down and come over the top or push it out and sneak through. This, for this one, it's really difficult to do unless, you, unless you've got experience fighting a southpaw, it's difficult to do by yourself. So this is one that you're probably better off doing um, more importantly with a partner when you're shadow boxing, uh, when you're sparring, sorry. So when we're doing this, all me and Danvers would do as a spy, if I was orthodox and he was southpaw, he'd say, right, neither of us can throw our backhands. All we're gonna do is play for trying to land the shots, being playful, boom. And you'll notice that when Danvers throws that jab, I came down and come over the top and vice versa, I might just try and push out and sneak in. So all you're gonna do, one or two rounds at the beginning of your session, especially if you're gonna spy, it's a good thing just to do is build a habit. Just focus on that one thing, the battle of the lead hand, where we're just literally sparring just the battle of the lead hand. While you're doing this, if you've been practicing your lead foot, it's a, now's the time to try and get these positions, or if Danvers gets his lead foot on the outside, again, use that battle of the lead hand to take it off him so that I know I've only got this one shot to worry about even though he can't throw it in this situation. So don't just remember the, bat the battle of the lead foot, also remember the battle of the lead hand when you're fighting a southpaw. As I said, if you've got a good imagination or you're more experienced, again, you can do all this stuff while you're practicing shadow boxing or just on the bag. So high lead hand and foot position so far.